Good day, everyone. It's Steve Anderson, and uh, welcome to the pre-show. So we're going to start the webinar at the top of the hour in just about four minutes. And uh, so as everybody's coming online, uh, I was going to do just a few quick update announcements. Very excited for the webinar today. Uh, Jack Fairchild and I have been in close communication over the last few months as the whole pandemic has uh, unfolded and he's got some great, great tips and advice for everybody today. Uh, in terms of just quick uh, Crown Council updates, uh, as everybody knows, the PPE uh, experience continues and uh, we continue at the Crown Council to, uh, to source N95s, gowns, uh, surgical masks, so you can go to the uh, this website address, the bit.ly forward slash crown books and see everything that is available. That continues to be an ongoing challenge we know around the country. And so we are doing our best to source good PPE and provide it to you at cost. Whatever we can find it for, we're just turning around and, uh, and uh, making it available. So I hope that helps. Uh, that continues to be available. Uh, Smiles for Life, just a quick update. Uh, the, as you know, the Smiles for Life campaign has been extended to the end of August, which we're very excited about, and the donations are pouring in, and we appreciate everybody who uh, continues to participate in that. And along those lines, tonight, for the first time, we're going to do a Smiles for Life benefit concert online. Um, very talented artist, Abby Anderson. Uh, we'll be doing that, and you can go to that uh, website address that's on the screen for tickets. It starts at 8 o'clock Central Time tonight, uh, all benefiting Smiles for Life. So Abby's put together a great program uh, that should be highly entertaining uh, with great heart and a great message. So very family appropriate, and uh, so we hope you'll join us for that uh, tonight. Uh, annual event, uh, you should have, if you're registered for the annual event, you should have received your annual event box uh, with a Starburst package for every member of the team. I know, probably drove everybody crazy that we're sending out candy, uh, especially in light of what Jack's going to talk <laughs> about in just a couple of minutes. <laughs> so uh, annual event is uh, preparations are in high gear. Uh, Salt Lake City in January, uh, we're making some just amazing uh, plans uh, around all that, working very closely with the Grand America Hotel, which is one of the finest hotels in America, uh, on making all of this work. So uh, if you have registered, uh, you'll be receiving, if you haven't received already, um, an annual event box for every member of the team. If you have not registered, you can go to ccannualevent.com and uh, sign up. It's going to be a spectacular experience. Uh, then uh, coming up next Friday, a week from this Friday, July 10th, uh, we are doing an online version of No More Hygiene with Dr. Tommy Neighbors. Uh, that'll be a six-hour course, six hours of CE, and uh, it is uh, going to be packed with great information to help you implement modular periodontal therapy in your practice. So you can go to totalpatientservice.com to register for that or call the 800 number and our team will be happy to help get you all signed up for that. Uh, we continue to do the uh, TOPS Total Immersion course um, online and live. So our next live course will be in September in Fort Worth. Uh, so we have had huge response to that over the last few months in terms of the online course and great attendance coming up in September. So uh, information on that is at totalpatientservice.com and uh, you can also uh, give, give our team a call. So with that, um, there are a couple of just quick housekeeping items. If you've just joined us, you're in listen-only mode. That means that you can hear me and you'll be able to hear Jack loud and clear. Uh, we cannot hear you. That's to eliminate any background noise. So at any time, if you have questions during uh, the presentation, you can go to your question box, uh, which is in your, um, your control panel. And you're welcome to type in any questions there as we go along. 
and then we'll be able to answer those either during the presentation or, or when Jack finishes the formal presentation. In addition to that, in your control panel, if you go down to the handout section, there's actually a PDF file there uh, that I've uploaded that contains all the content that Jack's going to share today so that you can follow along. And there's going to be, this is a checklist heavy presentation, a ton of content that Jack's put together. So you, you are going to want that uh, at, to be able to apply what he talks about today. Uh, for those of you that may not be familiar with Jack Fairchild, Jack and I um, have known each other for, Jack, I think we're 30 years, brother, 30 years, yeah. uh, for 30 years, and uh, we, we met when Jack was in preschool, as you can tell from his very youthful picture, he is a product of the product, uh, just a little background um, on Jack. Uh, he is a fellow uh, in the American Council of Applied Clinical Nutrition. Uh, which is one of the highest certifications you can have in the nutrition world. He's board certified. He's a board certified clinical nutritionist. Uh, he, ha he is a licensed dietitian and nutritionist uh, and is certified in complementary medical nutrition. Sounds very sophisticated, Jack. Uh, and is also certified in, in uh, IV nutrition as well. And Jack's been a Crown Council resource partner since we started the Crown Council. He's been here as long as all of us have and has provided over the years some great background and has helped literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of Crown Council members uh, to achieve higher levels of better health. Uh, he has saved some practitioners, saved some practices over the years by identifying things they can do to uh, be healthier and be able to practice better. So with that, uh, I asked Jack today specifically to walk through what we can all do to have a healthier immune system. And with all of the focus we've had on PPE and social distancing and all of those things, which are really, really important, uh, at the end of the day, it's our own immune system uh, that is the is the real key protection. And so he has put together a very actionable, straightforward, uh, simple to implement things that everybody on the team can do to stay healthy. So with that, um, Jack, we're looking forward to this. I'm going to pass the screen over to you okay, uh, so that you can show your slides and control it. And you should have that ready to roll. All right. Well, Steve, thank you all uh, for inviting me. I always uh, enjoy the chance to get to uh, visit and hang out with you guys and speak to the group. So I'm really looking forward to this. And uh, aside from the Starburst comment that you made at the beginning, <laughs> you get it right on the head. I mean, um, I, I, I certainly believe, as you've just mentioned, that um, the, the PPEs and the things that we're using, certainly they're important, but ultimately this body has been dealing with immune issues since the beginning of time. And I'm, I'm um, uh, I guess a little disappointed over the last several months that we've seen little to no information on improving the immune health of the body. Everything has been basically placed on what can we do to prevent this thing from jumping on us, this, this, this virus, this boogeyman, so to speak. And, uh, and, and my feeling really is that if we can, uh, as we improve immune function, then certainly we improve our chances of uh, being resistant to this particular virus, for that matter, all viruses. So with that said, we're going to jump right into this. Uh, your team's immune system, uh, as you mentioned, we want to outline as many uh, action items as we can. I'm going to uh, skip through some of them because a lot of this is going to be reading material that people can just kind of go back and, and, and hit on their own, but we certainly want to bring uh, and highlight some things. So the first thing I want to mention uh, and this is actually, you know, we, I think we did the webinar back in, in March and this was really how I started that webinar, but the most important thing is the health of the body. So as the, um, as the quote here, the health of the host is always more important than the strength of the bug. It doesn't matter what you're dealing with in, in the way of an infection. If the host is, is weakened, then obviously the bug is going to have a greater impact uh, on the host. So what we want to do today is talk about how we can improve the overall health. As you and I started talking about this particular uh, presentation, I really began thinking about the fact that um, the whole dental team, as I understand it, 
is really dependent upon each person's own health in order to keep them running. I'm not exactly sure what you guys are having to do if somebody were to test positive. Uh, does that shut down the whole office? Does that person have to be quarantined? But the bottom line is it affects the entire team. So again, our goal is to help you guys with some ideas that you can bring to the table starting today um, and to start improving your health. With that said, a little disclaimer at the bottom, obviously if you're sick, go see your doctor. Um, but overall, let's, uh, let's see what we can do to uh, improve this immune response. So we're gonna jump right into dietary uh, action items. And I think we've spoken about this before, but uh, sugar, we wanna eliminate sugar and sugary drinks from the diet. And we're starting here with diet. There are obviously several different uh, sections that we're gonna go through, but diet is really uh, kind of my area and it's where we can really affect the overall immune system greatly. So we want to eliminate sugar and sugary drinks. When we eat sugar, we drop what's called the leukocytic index by about 90%. And this is done within about 15 to 20 minutes of eating sugar. Now, the interesting thing is that drop in the immune system actually maintains for about the next four to six hours at less than 50%. So the bottom line is if a person is eating sugar, or let's say drinking a soda pop or whatever it may be, they every time that they have that next sugary substance, it's dropping the immune system down uh, to less than 50%. And if this happens throughout the day, you can see that a person's immune system is being you know, suppressed throughout the day by nothing more than a simple dietary choice. So this is gonna be real, real important moving forward. And it's interesting, I saw just two days ago, I saw a, an ad on television for a new breath mint that came out. And uh, it's, it's obviously tying in with, with the mask, but it's saying that uh, uh, something like mask breath is real. So pop in a, a, a breath mint before you put your mask on. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness. So now we're throwing in sugar uh, on top of that. So it's just a bad mix. So we wanna avoid sugar. Obviously some of these uh, common things that most people know, alcohol certainly irritates the GI lining. It pulls off nutrient reserves. And the big key here with nutrients is the immune system functions out of the nutrients. I mean, it's dependent on nutrients. So if we are using nutrients, um, using up in, in things like dealing with sugar or alcohol or whatever else it may be, then we have less to fight uh, pathogens that are coming in. We wanna eliminate common allergens, uh, dairy, wheat, gluten, soy, peanut, shellfish. There are a lot of different allergens out there. Um, and let's even look here at the next one, eliminate known allergenic foods. The problem with allergens is they are going to stimulate an inflammatory response. So when we have this inflammatory response, again, this is pulling down and weakening the immune system. So the idea would be to clean up the diet as best we can uh, in those areas that we know or suspicion, and that can help to take a big load off the immune system. Eliminate GMO and processed foods. I won't spend a lot of time on this other than say that again, Anything chemical is going to require detoxification, and detoxification is completed with nutrient supply. So once again, we are using up nutrients to detoxify something that really shouldn't be in there anyway. Um, we all know about adding uh, fruits and vegetables. We want to do that. We can uh, bring in phytochemicals and fiber, which incidentally, the recommendation for fiber is 25 grams a day. The average American gets about 10 grams a day. The really, really healthy cultures in the world consume closer to 40 grams a day. That's a lot of fiber, but the goal is to get to about 25 grams. And when we can do that, we certainly improve our overall health. Made a little comment here to drive NO, that's the nitric oxide production. We can drive nitric oxide production with things like beets and celery, uh, lettuce, spinach, radish, there are others. But as we drive that, nitric oxide is something that has an anti-pathogenic effect. Obviously, fresh cooked herbs and spices, these are all great. Everybody's heard of, uh, you know, how good garlic and oregano is. All have anti-pathogenic activities and boost immune function. Uh, adding probiotic and fermented foods. So most people have heard of yogurt. Um, certainly it has good uh, or offers good probiotics. So these that are listed, kefir yogurt, sauerkraut, kimchi, tempeh, miso, olives, kombucha, all fermented and probiotic rich foods. There's a little, um, I guess I'll just say a little caution here in that if somebody has a histamine response, a high histamine response, some of these foods are naturally high in histamine 
and that can create a little bit of an issue, but overall probiotic and fermented foods are great to have. Uh, certainly pure water, um, 64 ounces plus or minus daily. The idea is to kind of maybe base this on body weight. Um, if you're a little heavier individual, maybe need a little more water and vice versa. Uh, overall though, the take home message, and again, everybody knows this, de dehydration is a really, really big issue when it comes to what's called cell voltage. So as I list here, uh, we're going to impact the pH and the cider voltage if the hydration level drops in the body. And the bottom line is if that cell, which typically runs between uh, a negative 70 to about uh, 110 millivolts, that's a really healthy cell. But with dehydration, we'll start seeing it slip into the thir uh, minus 30 and minus 50 millivolts and even lower, which opens the cell up to insult. So again, water is important. It's going to carry oxygen and, uh, and oxygen is obviously a very important thing. We want to rotate and incorporate a variety of healthy foods. The idea here is there's safety in numbers. So don't eat the same thing over and over and over again, even if it's healthy. In other words, we don't want to eat broccoli seven days a week only. So let's rotate those foods. It's very helpful. Made a note on here for those who feel uh, I don't know, a little adventurous, consider a liquids only day. Um, this is really good to do kind of once weekly. This reduces the digestive load. It reduces the antigenic load. And the idea is literally to take a day, maybe it's on a Saturday or a Sunday, or uh, if the office is closed on a Friday, maybe it's a Friday, but to actually kind of work through your day where you're mainly doing more vegetables, vegetable juices, broths, miso, uh, herbal teas. And you basically want to get about six to eight ounces every hour. And what that'll do is literally give your digestive system about a 24 hour vacation. When that occurs, it allows the body to repair. Because let's keep in mind, I may have mentioned this before, but the human body doesn't defend and repair at the same time very effectively. And in other words, it says, hey, look, Steve, I'll defend you if you need defending and or I'll repair you if you need repairing, but I can't do them both at the same time very effectively. So a liquids only day literally gives the body a chance to kind of pull back from the food, that the foods that need to be digested and gives you a chance to kind of slip into a repair mode. So it's a great tool to use if people want and or can, can do that. Um, probably a big one here with the office is, is reserve, receive and serve only healthy snacks. Uh, try to donate everything else or, <laughs> or, or suggest. <laughs> where would you <laughs> suggest we donate those, Jack? <laughs> <laughs> well, I can suggest where to donate them. Nobody's going to like it. But uh, because I would say this, I mean, obviously, if somebody's really, really hungry and starving, yeah, I, I'm not really concerned about what the macronutrients look like. But overall, yeah, really try try to uh, to serve or to uh, at least have in the office as healthy a snack as, as one can get. Um, because as we just established, those sugary snacks that I'm guessing most offices have every single bite of that is going to drop that immune response by as much as 90 percent that's crazy so, it, you know if if one questions the the action item i would just go back to the very first one which is the fact that we all get to choose if we want to drop that immune response then grab that chocolate chip cookie and if you don't want to then let's leave it alone and go for the for the carrot sticks or something um I've, I've indicated here to incorporate biobalanced meal planning guidelines. Now, that's going to be on the next slide, and we'll get to that in a moment. But the idea behind this, this is just a real brief um, dietary plan, if you will, that I put together actually several years ago. Steve, I think I presented this to the TOPS group uh, maybe in 2013 or 14. Still applies. But the idea is we want to do our best to balance the insulin to glucagon ratio. Because what happens is insulin is highly inflammatory. As a matter of fact, insulin is the number one inflammatory hormone in the human body. So as sugar goes up, insulin goes up. As insulin goes up, inflammation goes up. And as inflammation goes up, that basically leads into an entire host of problems. So by following these little guidelines, we can balance that insulin to glucagon ratio and we can downregulate inflammation. This then will have an impact on immune function and specifically also body composition. And Steve, this was something you'd asked me about when we were talking about this presentation, which was how does weight factor into this? Yeah. And certainly the, the information that's being put out says, yeah, if a, if a person is, is overweight, that's gonna make them more susceptible. I kind of go a step further and I go, well, 
let's look at this. A person's weight issue is actually secondary to an underlying, whoops, excuse me, is actually secondary to an underlying uh, health problem concern, or in this case, I would say probably an inflammatory response. So rather than saying that weight is a causative factor, I'm gonna go back and say, the causative factor of the weight is the causative factor, if that makes sense. Now, a yeah. lot of times it takes a little bit of, of digging and, 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 and you know, kind of uh, uh, looking for clues to find out what those causative factors are that are causing the weight problem. But ultimately, it is further upstream that's actually setting us up for being more susceptible to these infections. Um, lastly, on the dietary action items, and again, I'm not suggesting that if anybody's on a PPI, uh, proton, uh, proton pump inhibitor, acid blocking medication, that they drop it. But the idea is to consider reducing it and or getting off of it at some point. Most people probably already know that antacids or these acid blockers are only in, uh, indicated for about the first eight to 10 weeks. They're not supposed to be used long-term. Yet I get people in my office all the time who've been on them for eight, 10, 12 years. The problem with that is if we're blocking acid, we're blocking digestion. If we block digestion, we're then increasing allergenic uh, compounds into the bloodstream, which now increases our inflammatory immune response. So in, in essence, antacids, in my opinion, are creating a whole host of problems. But again, that's not to say just to go off and drop it. There are things that could be done to actually improve it, uh, the acid indigestion, to help a person get off of that at that time. Um, let's go to the next slide here. This is the biobalance chart uh, guideline I was just referring to a moment ago. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but just to say that essentially you pick a category from each box and kind of combine the food, combine your meal, and that will work towards balancing that insulin to glucagon ratio. Very simple to do. On this next slide here, there's a yeah, breakdown. Can I, um, can I just interject in case somebody yes. joined us late? So this, these two charts are in the handout section in your control panel. So if, you, if you're watching, you can go down to the handout section and this whole PDF is there, you can download it. Uh, if you're listening post, uh, if you're listening to the recording of this, this will be posted with the recording of the webinar. So all of this, while it's kind of small on the screen, you've got access to it and can see it in live, large, bold print. Thanks, Steve. Um, I, and, and I will say that that obviously this is not a one size fits all. It's more of a kind of a guideline because there may be foods that I have listed here that are still not the best for a particular person. But for the most part, this is going to come really close to pointing somebody in the right direction and getting them moving towards a balanced insulin glucagon ratio, less inflammation, less immune uh, load. Second page here, this is the breakdown of the vegetables and fruits based on their glycemic index. So you can look across the top here at the 3% vegetables. These are the vegetables that obviously have less sugar or less starch. Uh, again, really easy, just read through here. Everything is pretty well spelled out. Uh, if, if a person has questions, certainly they can shoot me an email, um, connect with me and we can uh, answer some questions. Um, so let's look at body work because a lot of times, you know, we we kind of we may even jump into a better diet, but we really then don't start doing the things for the for the health of the body like we could be doing, which also greatly impacts uh, the immune system. So I want to mention here, get outdoors for about a half an hour a day, get some fresh air, get some sunshine. Basically, light is the most important environmental input uh, after food, obviously, for controlling bodily functions. So light is very, very important. About a half hour of some sunshine will produce about 10 to 20,000 units of vitamin D. They've shown in the studies that ultraviolet light causes viral inactivation, which is fantastic, obviously, oxygenates the body, increases killer cells, um, improves mitochondrial function. So all this becomes uh, you know, really important. Vitamin D they've shown in the literature, at least that they know of right now, is involved in over 200 antimicrobial peptides. What this means is vitamin D is, is really your best friend, one of your best friends, when it comes to protect your body against uh, uh, immune issues, infectious uh, 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 pathogens. Make time for about 15 to 30 minutes of so leisurely walking or stretching daily. And as you can imagine, you could probably combine those two. 
get out and walk and catch some sunshine at the same time. And, and you can do that 30 minutes a day. Uh, I don't know what everybody gets for lunch or if they get breaks during the day. But again, this is even something that maybe would work out uh, during their actual uh, work day. Engage in a routine, routine exercise plan at least three times a week. I'm not going to suggest any particular exercise, but I will say this. Uh, I am a fan of exercise, and unless somebody is really training for a real uh, intense event, I like more the middle of the road exercise because too much exercise can also be a stress on the body. And at the same time, no exercise is, is a huge stress on the body. So find a happy medium. And again, I threw in even some, some office exercises. Now, I don't know, the docs may not like me for this, but, but there are things that one can do in the office, whether it's chair dips or steps or, or uh, you know, leaning wall uh, uh, push-ups, those types of things. These are all things that could be done to improve one's activity. Make time uh, for one or more three three minute deep breathing breaks during the day. The idea behind this, especially in light of the fact that I believe most of these team members and docs, they're in mask and and in face shields and I mean all day long. So if we can, when we can, find a little three minute deep breathing break. Uh, and there's no really particular uh, specific breathing exercise that one has to do. Now there are a lot of them out there. You can you can do a search on deep breathing, you can find a jillion different exercises. I didn't want to present any particular one because the bottom line is let's just get out, and let's just breathe for three minutes. Good, slow, rhythmic, deep breathing. The research behind this shows that it balances the sympathetic nervous system, lowers the stress response, and maybe more importantly, helps to alkalinize the pH. We're going to come back to pH a little bit later, but I want to point out that alkalizing the pH is very, very involved when it comes to becoming more resistant to infections. Take an Epsom salt baking soda bath one to three times weekly. <clears throat> I'm not suggesting that this be done as a team, although if one wants, if the group wants to do it as a team, maybe really? that's something, you know. Um, but the idea is about a half a cup of each to a warm bath. You soak about 20 minutes. Magnesium sulfate, which is found in Epsom salt, helps to dilate and open the pores. As the pores are, are open, toxins can come out and bicarbonate is or the baking soda is what's useful to neutralize the toxins it's a great tool to use I, I i wish people would do it three times a week through in here also i mean massage therapy now again with the all the covid restrictions i don't even know in the different areas presently with the the upswing that we've had in cases over the last couple three weeks who's able to do massage therapy or not but nonetheless that is good work saunas are good are, are good things to do and I've even seen recently sauna blankets. I'm not gonna endorse any particular one, but I've seen a couple of them online. And it's for those people who can't, either don't have an a, a infrared sauna or can't get to one, can't find one. And it's actually done right in the, in the privacy of your own home. So that's something that could be researched. Another really nice, neat tool is incorporating light therapy. Uh, there is a green, it's called a dichromatic green light. And you can usually pick these up uh, like through Sylvania or General Electric. But what a green light does is a green light actually balances your, your brain uh, biorhythms and supports the thymus gland in its function in regulating the immune system. Really easy to do, you do it for about 20 minutes. You can uh, uh, get this, uh, it's a floodlight, and you can put this floodlight into just a regular you know, socket, uh, like one of these clip, um, uh, clip sockets. And that could be put up at home, or again, I'm thinking in the office, in the break room. And whenever a person goes in there, they can pick up, if they can get a full 20 minutes, fantastic. But if not, any little bit would be helpful to the immune response. And this is easy to do. Um, and I, I would say if you can't get it in the office, for sure, put it in the house. Last thing here, alternate hot, cold showering, always finishing with cold. This has been shown to stimulate the vagus nerve. And I'm telling you, Right now, the literature's coming out. We are seeing a huge, huge influx of research on the vagus nerve and the role it plays with immune function, gastrointestinal function. I mean, the list is, is enormous right now, what we're seeing. And one of the best ways is with a hotter, uh, hot and cold showers, alternating that. And then I put here, last sentence, the CES devices are also really effective. I know I've talked with some of the Crown Council members over the years who have used CES devices. Uh, you simply clip them to your earlobe and uh, do about a 15 minutes uh, uh, protocol there. 
that has been shown to be very effective at uh, balancing the sympathetic and parasympathetic branches of the autonomic nervous system. Let's go to the next slide. Mental emotional, we'll spend a lot of time here because I think most everybody already knows this. Um, but this, you know, this first one I will mention, this is something that I've, I've coached basketball now for almost 20 years, uh, youth basketball. And before every single practice, whenever I get the kids, before we start, every one of them has to share something that they're grateful for for the day with the rest of the team. And I mean, it could be anything, person, place, thing. Uh, this could be air conditioning. Obviously, in, in these last few months, it could be toilet paper. But just find <laughs> something that you're grateful for and, and, and just voice it and share it. So this was something I thought, you know, could be added to the morning huddle. Um, uh, the rest of these things I think are also great. I'm going to touch on one down here, downloading and use a gratitude app. I believe it was, was it 2018, Steve, was the annual event in San Antonio? That's right. Yeah, okay. and it was Hal, Hal Elrod. Um, okay. He, and he recommended the, uh, well, The Miracle Morning is the book. And then the app that he recommended in one of our subsequent Mentor of the Month is called The Five Minute Journal. That's right. And it's great. I, I picked that up um, after that event and I have not missed a day now in over two years. It takes about five minutes, but again, allows you to tap into just, even if it's just five minutes of gratitude, that will change the immune response greatly. Now, if you can tap into it consistently throughout the day, which we all should, uh, even better. And then obviously, uh, prayer, meditation, mindfulness, EFT, which stands for Emotional Freedom Technique. This is something that could be researched online. HeartMath is a fantastic company that does some phenomenal research uh, out of California, and they study the role of stress response on overall health. They really do. They've done a lot of good work. So mental emotional. Let me talk a little bit about sleep cycle here. Uh, basically, bottom line for males must be asleep no later than 1030 p.m. And that's the key is to be asleep, not in bed. Be asleep by 1030. Females, 11 p.m. The idea is it takes about 90 minutes. Actually, this is the research it takes 90 minutes for a male to reach a deep sleep pattern. The first pass of growth hormone occurs between 12 and 1 a.m. So we want to be in that deep sleep pattern whenever that first pass of growth hormone rolls around. Second pass, <coughs> excuse me, occurs around 3.30 to 4.30 in the morning. Again, we want to be in a deep sleep pattern. So don't miss those growth hormone opportunities because if you do, you're not repairing and you're not rebuilding during the, the wee morning of, uh, mornings, hourly mornings, I should say. And that is whenever all the repair takes place. So we really need to do that. Use blue black screens or blue glasses, blue blocking glasses, I should say, for electronic devices. You can find these online. Uh, I personally, I have a blue screen on my computer and I, I have glasses here in the house. I've got them everywhere. Uh, so that whenever I'm on my iPad or whatever, uh, it uh, helps to protect. Give yourself a chance to downshift back into alpha because what happens is when you are using these devices and not using blue blocking shields or glasses, it really stimulates the beta waves. So it gets the brain kind of cranked up. Therefore, it's harder to get into a deep sleep pattern. So give yourself about an hour before bed to kind of cycle back in. I, I recommend turning off your Wi-Fi at bedtime. You're not using it while you're sleeping, so it's best to do. Try to really uh, uh, cover the lights in the bedroom, turn them all off or remove them. And uh, sometimes that just may mean that you have to, I don't know, put a sock or a shoe up in front of the little light on the TV. Um, Obviously, you can tell I know that by experience. So those are things that that we can do. And uh, and the very last item down here, I'll just point out, goes back to diet because if a person's eating a poor diet, that is going to impact sleep patterns greatly. So we'll go back to uh, dietary action items and incorporate those. So let me just mention. I mean, supplements plays a big key. And when we did when we did the presentation back in March, uh, I spoke really pretty extensively on different supplements that we could use. I'm going to point out here at the top of this slide, there is no substitute for a healthy diet. I don't care how many great supplements you're taking. If you're not eating the best diet, do the, doing the best you can, it's, it's still a poor diet. So we still have to focus on the, on the actual food intake. Uh, no amount of supplementation is going to, over, going, to, or going to overcome the negative consequences of a poor diet. So I want to mention that. Um, I'll drop to the bottom here under the bold print 
because I mentioned, uh, see the previous presentation, news for immune support for specific info. If somebody wants that info, and that info was more directed towards an actual acute uh, infectious process, but that information is there. And the last thing I want to point out that supplementation, in my opinion, is best when it's based on signs, symptoms, biochemical data or testing and research. And, and I think when we bring those in, we get a better result. I see people all the time that come into the office and they come in with a bag of supplements and literally, I mean, they're taking 20, 30, 40 different bottles of things. And I kind of go through them and I look and I go, you know, there's maybe four or five items here that I think would be really important to what you're dealing with now. But the other pile here is really not maybe being specific for you. So again, I, I think that that's really one of the best things when it comes to supplementation. Now, with that said, uh, though, let's don't forget that we do live in a toxic world. And in my opinion, supplementation is a part of life uh, to some degree. Um, Jack, so just um, yes. if I can just insert that, that previous presentation that you just mentioned, just for everybody's mm -hmm. information, um, is a Crown Council Mentor of the Month program. So if you go to crowncouncil.org in the Mentor of the Month section, it's one of the most most recent Mentor of the Months, and it's packed with um, very science-based information that uh, even goes into more detail. So that is there. All right, thanks, Steve. So I wanna mention some things that we can do kind of home testing. And probably one of the first and best is doing first morning urine pH. So first morning urine pH basically gives us kind of an overall look at, at what happened with the body overnight. Like, like how did the body handle the previous day's load as well as dietary load? And what was the result of that? Easy to do, uh, you, you buy pH paper, you can get that at a, at a local pharmacy, you can get it online. Uh, I, I send it here out of the office all the time. So this is easy to get. And, and really what you do is you just simply tear off a piece of, of pH tape. It kind of comes in like a, almost like a scotch tape roll. Tear off two to three inches and just simply wet that in the urine and, and then compare that to the little color chart that's on the container and record that. The idea is we're looking for a 6.5 to 7.5 morning, first morning urine pH. If we get that, we know that the body's handling the acids that it's, it's producing during just typical metabolism and that there's more mineral reserve available. Most often, though, we see people well below 6.5. The problem that this presents is that when the pH drops, we open ourselves up to a lot of problems. Number one, we're burning mineral base. Uh, we're creating more oxidation, more free radicals, more stress in the body. Where this ties in with, with our present day pandemic is viruses are pH dependent. What this means is that the viruses prefer an acid environment. So if there is greater acidity in the body, it's easier for the virus to actually set up shop. They've actually shown in, in good research science that most all of these viruses, uh, corona being one of them, is inactivated, actually irreversibly inactivated when the pH is pushed up into an eight. Now I'm not saying that everybody needs to purposely drive their pH up to an 8.0 for 72 to 96 hour window, but the literature shows that whenever that was done, it inactivated the viruses. So the idea is, let's start with diet and let's just help to improve the pH. Let's alkalinize the body better and we can keep that pH higher, which means that the higher it is, the higher the cellular voltage. You remember a little earlier, I commented that as the cellular voltage drops, we're, we're susceptible to more infections, pathogens, uh, uh, mutagenic you know, states or, or changes, cancer uh, cells, that type of thing. So this is a real simple, quick, easy test to do. Uh, could be done at home. I don't know. Uh, could be done at the office. Most people are obviously going to uh, probably urinate before they get to the office. But the idea is this is something that we can do. And, and, and I generally will tell people when you start seeing a pattern develop, like, you know, let's say you're getting a 6.8 to 7.0, for a week straight and you're going, all right, I'm kind of in a good pattern, then you may not have to do it every single day. But keep up with it because pH is a huge, huge key when it comes to immune function. Breath hold test. 
bottom line, you'll see here, let's see, second sentence, normal results are 45 to 65. You simply take a deep breath and hold it as long as you can and you time yourself or you have somebody else time you. If you're less than 45, it also means that we're too acidic. So we're not able to offload oxygen as well as we should. So when we get too acidic, hemoglobin can latch on to oxygen, but it doesn't release it. It's like it's bound up. And so now the body can't transport oxygen like it should because we are too acidic and that can be reflected in a breath hold test. Obviously, as we mentioned here, if a person has outright cardiovascular or respiratory issues or they're in an infection, that's gonna be a little bit different at that particular time. But otherwise, this is a really good simple test to do. Last one, kind of take home testing. And um, you know, I mentioned this to you, Steve, I thought the, the whole group might get a kick out of this one, but it's important, the bowel transit test. And literally, what we're doing is we're wanting to see what the interval is between consumption and elimination of food. And ideal should be about 12 to 18 hours. If, if we can kind of maintain that 12 to 18 hour transition time, then it means that we are not moving foods through too quickly, which means that we're not digesting them properly, or it means that foods are not sitting around too long, which means that they are putrefying and creating a lot of oxidative and toxic compounds that the body also has to deal with, which once again, lowers immune function. This is a real simple test to do. Uh, suggested dosage here says take six to 12 capsules of, of charcoal, charcoal capsules with about eight ounces of water just after a bowel movement, record the date and, and time of day. And this marks the beginning of the test. And then the next time that you see kind of the black crumbly charcoal looking stool, you will record the output time. And the goal is 12 to 18 hours. It is almost, um, I don't wanna say it's 100%, but it's very high up in the 90 percentile that I see people who are longer than 18 hours. Uh, I've seen people as long as 96 hours. We're talking four days. And in these people, I will have a conversation with them and maybe the conversation goes like this. Mrs. Jones says, well, Jack, I have a daily bowel movement, half for years, don't miss a day. We do the, the bowel transit test and we find out that she's four days behind. So for all these years, yes, she's having a bowel movement, but she is four days behind, which means she's creating a tremendous amount of toxic load and a toxic burden on the liver, on the gut and on the immune system. So real, real good test to do. Again, I'll say if this, if they want to do this as a team, do it as a team. Uh, but this might be one that's maybe better done privately. Um, lastly, I want to mention laboratory testing. Because Steve, you had commented to me when we first spoke about this, you were like, is there some type of testing that we could do to give people, you know, kind of a, a look at their immune system? And, and the possibilities are endless. I mean, I, I looked at everything and, and, you know, kind of researching, well, what would be the best thing to do? There are things for GI profiles, there are allergy profiles and hormonal profiles, and we can look at salivary uh, IgA testing and CD4s and CD8s. I mean, the list goes on and on. But what I felt like was I thought, you know, the best thing that we could do, though, would be to just simply look at a CBC, uh, which would include not just things like red blood cell, hemoglobin, hematocrit, but would also include specifically the phagocytes, neutrophils, lymphocytes, monocytes, eosinophils, basophils, and these are the heart of your immune system. From that data, along with a vitamin D test, we can get some good insights into immune function, uh, oxygen transport, pH control, anemias, spleen and thymus function, which is the heart or the control of your immune function. And we can even see possible nutrient deficiencies so there's a lot of information that one can get from just a simple CBC. Um, and I felt like that would be something that would be relatively uh, quick, simple, and inexpensive to do. Um, and we want to certainly offer that to you guys, to the, to the whole group, as well as a half hour consult, so that when we get that data back, I can go over it with the person and really share with them what we're seeing, and maybe more importantly, what we can do to attempt to change it. Uh, let's see here. And with that, so uh, that's the last slide. I'll just point out here that if somebody is interested in this and wants to do this, uh, contact me. I've got my, my email here, phone number, and, um, and we can process that and get that set up for the individual or individuals or the whole team. So with that, I'll conclude and open it to some questions. I, I 
that gives us a little bit of time for some questions. Got it. Thank you, Jack. Um, packed with great stuff. Um, one of the objectives of having this conversation today is that you know the Crown Council is all about creating a culture of success in your practice. And one of the things that we know is that personal habits translate. So whatever someone is doing or two people on the team are doing, that has a tendency to impact or influence everybody else on the team. So uh, to your very, very first point about sugar and your immune system, when somebody walks in with a big gulp and a monster drink first thing in the morning, <laughs> probably not the best thing for your immune system, right, Jack? Probably not the best thing for your immune system. And let me just touch on that. You know, whenever I see people that come into the office and we're, we're having a consult, I don't typically tell them, look, just drop it cold turkey unless they're a person that can go cold turkey. But there right. are a lot of people who are already set up They're, you know, maybe they're having four or five cups of coffee. And we do, we try to titrate them down a little bit at a time so that it's just not such a shock. But yes, you're correct. Monsters and sodas, big gulps are not the thing, not for a healthy immune system. A um, couple of, just a couple of things that come to mind in terms of creating a, a healthy immune culture in the practice. Those resources that you provided in the handout in your slides that everybody has access to of the uh, the food combination, the, yes. um, the different combinations of things would be a great one to hang up in the office in the lunchroom as a good reminder. Can you, um, can you just address what a CES device is real quick, Jack? Yeah. So it's, it stands for cranial electrical stimulation device. Now it's typically used for depression, anxiety, that type of thing. It's actually, it's it's approved. I believe it's FDA approved. Don't quote me on that, but I believe that it is. Um, it's a little device with a little ear clip and literally it just clicks to the uh, clips to the earlobe. Uh, it, it works in changing the neurochemistry of the brain, but what, what they're showing now with the vagus nerve, which is really so cool, is if you place that uh, little clip in two particular places on the ear, uh, you can directly impact the vagus nerve. And when you impact that vagus nerve, you're going to shift the person from sympathetic dominance into a parasympathetic state, and that allows them to get into rest and repair. So that's that's the beauty behind it. And I think, uh, again, uh, I, I don't particularly use them here in the office, but uh, they're relatively inexpensive. I'm going to say you can probably find them for less than 100 bucks. Um, and there's even some some information online that would uh, give a person some information as to how to use it. Perfect, excellent. Um, some great uh, great advice here today. Couple of action items that I would um, suggest. Um, first of all, if you'd like CE credit for today's webinar, the uh, you can just cut and paste that URL into your browser. Oh, sorry your browser, sorry about that. Um, and that will take you to the CE test. There's 10 questions for the presentation today. So that's uh, that address right there. And then as Jack mentioned, uh, if you wanna dig into this a little bit more with the, the simple immune system testing that he's put together, uh, you can either give his office a call or you can go to his website um, as well, which is right there on the screen. A um, couple of suggestions that I just have for everybody in terms of the cultural impact in your practice of this. Uh, if if you're watching this, what I would recommend is that you print out the handout, you, you put up the resources that Jack has provided in your next weekly meeting, maybe do a short uh, overview of what you've learned today. Again, this is a culture thing. And especially when it comes to diet, we influence each other in terms of what we eat, especially on the dental team. What comes into the office, everybody notices. And so sharing this information with the whole team because it's habits in the office, it's habits at the home, uh, at home. We're, we're in this for a while. Uh, it's very, very clear that the reality that we have entered here is not going to go away anytime soon and so health and staying healthy and having a healthy immune system is top priority especially when we're working in an environment where we are 
exposed to so many people every day. So um, Jack, thank you for sharing and, and condensing all of that in a format that everybody can use. Those are all actionable things from just the things we ought to be eating, the sleep we ought to be getting, when we should be sleeping, all of those things, um, huge, huge help and merit going back and looking at that repeatedly. Um, as I mentioned uh, at the beginning of this, this webinar is recorded and will be posted on crowncouncil.org later today with the resources. It'll be the featured webinar. Uh, so if you want other members of your team to watch it, uh, that is available to everyone uh, for everybody's benefits. So um, Jack, thank you again so much for taking the time to put that together in a concise, easy to act on format. Huge, huge help. And uh, we appreciate you uh, as we have for the last 30 years. Thanks for all of your, your great help and helping us be healthier. Thank you, Steve. Again, always a pleasure to be with you guys. And as you say, 30 years, that really does, that really hits. <laughs> <laughs> it really does hit. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jack. Thanks, everybody.